The objective of the CSTR experiment is to determine the reaction rate constant of the saponification reaction between ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide in a continuous stirred tank reactor. Since this experiment involves the use of caustic sodium hydroxide, it is essential to wear gloves throughout the duration of the procedure. As the reaction rate constant is determined through both titration and conductivity, it is important to standardize both your NaOH and HCl solutions. To begin, using a bulb pipette, we must hold the A valve while squeezing the bulb at the top to remove all of the air. Hold the S valve together to pipette 5 milliliters of KHP and use the E valve to dispense it into a small Erlenmeyer flask. Then add a drop of phenethylene indicator. The titration system should be set up as such. Once everything is set in place, it is time to titrate until you see a clear color change within your solution. In order to fill up your burette, you'll want to turn the valve to the left. And as you can see, due to gravity, the NaOH levels are rising. Once you have your desired amount of NaOH in your burette, you're able to turn the valve to the right in order to slowly dispense your NaOH into your flask. Once your solution turns pink and you see a distinct color change that doesn't disappear over time, you must abruptly stop your burette from dispensing any more NaOH as your solution is now standardized. The same standardization process should also be conducted for HCl. Furthermore, set aside several Erlenmeyer flasks, each containing 5 milliliters of HCl and a drop of phenethylene, as these will later on be used for the quenching process. Now, before beginning the actual experimental procedure, it is essential to make sure that all your connections are both secure as well as to each correct unit. Once you've assured that your pump lines are secure, you may suspend the beaker covers as shown to fill the beakers with their corresponding solutions easier. It is also important to make sure you've filled your beakers with enough solution to fully submerge the probes to ensure that accurate readings are being provided for the duration of the reaction. The final preliminary step is to ensure that the CSTR's water bath is sufficiently filled. Once you are done conducting all the preliminary steps, it is time to begin the experiment. Start by turning on the CSTR as well as pump 1 and the heater, setting it to your desired temperature. Then begin manually recording your temperature and conductivity values. Note that conductivity 1 accounts for the reactor, while conductivity 2 is for the sodium hydroxide reservoir. You may then turn on pumps 2 through 4 as well as the product's tank stir function to start the reaction. Once this is complete, use the flow rate dial to set your desired flow rate starting with 30 milliliters per minute. When you begin to see product flowing out of your product's tank, you must begin manually recording your conductivity, time, and temperature values in intervals of 2 to 5 minutes until your conductivity readings reach steady state. Once steady state is reached, small samples of less than 5 milliliter solution should be taken into a beaker from the product collection vessel to quench the HCl that was set aside earlier. It is important to note that these quenching aliquots were collected directly from the product's output and not from the collection's vessel beaker. The quenching process should follow the same steps used to standardize our solutions in the beginning, titrating until a distinct color change is observed. The product dripping out should also be collected in a beaker over a 60 second period to manually determine the output flow rate. Once all of your data is acquired, it is time to shut down the system. You will want to power off all of the switches and turn off the CSTR. After doing so, once again suspend your pump lines and remove the solution beakers. Properly dispose the remaining solutions into the designated waste container for this experiment. Finally, pipe it out any remaining product out of the collection vessel and dispose it into the same waste container as before. Finally, in order to rinse out the CSTR, fill both reactant beakers with water and turn on pumps 2 through 4 in the stirrer to run the water through the system. Similar to before, pipe it out any remaining liquid in the system. This water can be disposed down the drain. Make sure to clean up the lab station before leaving.